G'day, welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content of my channel. If you missed the last video, there's a link up there now. You can go watch that first. Then come back and watch this one. Alrighty, now before I get on with this episode, uh, I just want to cover something. Uh, just recently I passed 3,000 subscribers and I thought it must be about time that I stopped procrastinating about getting some stickers made. So I went and got, make sure I got it around the right way, these made. So if you're a subscriber of mine, uh, get in contact. There's, uh, my email address is just here right now because I don't want to put it down in the text. Get too many junk emails from it. Uh, and we'll have a talk about swapping uh, uh, stickers if you've got your own channel. Now, I have uh, two stickers on the way over from uh, Australia, I do believe. Two on the way back there and one on the way to Belgium to, for the sticker that used to be up there, uh, which is a bit bit ratty so I'm sort of trying to fix it up a bit uh, before I go sticking any more on the wall. Uh, when they arrive, the others, and I fix up this other one, I'm going to use the, uh, where, where is it, just here, the door here beside me to put the stickers on because this paint I used on the wall here, stickers don't seem to want to stick to it. But anyway, so follow me over to the mill and I'll show you when we get into this episode. Over there. Alrighty, so something I've had on my to-do list for quite a while is to build uh, a <coughs> inverted commas steam engine, but uh, it would never ever get run on steam because uh, when I was going to high school, I, as a school project, I was building a little steam turbine and I blew the bastard up and nearly scalded, I, well, I, I didn't nearly, I did. I scalded myself horrendously all down my chest and lucky I threw my head back just in the nick of time and only got my throat and all my chest. I have no desire to go through that again. So it will be an air-powered, compressed air-powered steam engine when I get around to doing it. But there are a couple of things I think I kind of need, or uh, well, might need, probably will need. One is pallet. So what I'm going to do is cast up an aluminium pallet out of this. Right, and I think I uh, bought a new uh, crucible the other day. Biggest thing I can get in that little barbecue I use. That, I want to, I got holds, what I know now, about one kilogram of uh, molten aluminium. This new one supposedly holds 1.2 kilograms. And I found an online calculator that will calculate, you know, how much molten aluminium comes out of something. And this thing uh, is just a tad over 20 mil thick, but I've removed these edges and didn't allow for it when I did the calculation. And it came out at 1.16 kilos. So I'm hoping that uh, I can get enough out of the new one to pour this when I do it. Now, the reason I've got that there like that is because this vise will only open up to 105 millimeters. And that's 100, at the moment, just over 100, so I can clean it up. Uh, and this is uh, 120 by 180. I can't, I'd like to have gone to 200, but that got me out to nearly 1.3 kilos, and then I didn't know if I could get there or not. So I decided to uh, go this way. So that's uh, that's what I'm going to do. The other thing I, uh, I think I might need to make an engine, and I mentioned it uh, when I was building the tool and cutter grinder, but when I had the, the indexing head on here, and I machined up the, the body, or machined the outside of the body for the cot chuck. I said I probably would have got a better finish if I had a tail stock. So that's another thing I want to make, uh, is, a, is a tail stock for that uh, indexing head. But that, that might be the next thing I make after this, I don't know. Anyway, I thought I'd, like, I'd, I'd do this as something simple for a change after 10 or 12 weeks, 11 weeks, whatever the hell it was, of making that other damn thing. So I'll get all this plastered up, get it cast up as soon as I can, and then we'll get on machining it up. You know, just when you think you've got everything worked out, you end up with something like this. Looks like I cast myself up an aeroplane today. I really don't know what went on. I've clamped it in the vise so you can see kind of how I had it set up in the bucket. It may have been a little more this way, but not much. Actually, it probably was. But I had it laid over so that I could get this buried into the sand as much as I could because in recent times, these, when I haven't had much sand around it, they've been coming off and just falling over. But I started pouring it, never spilled a drop for a change. I like, didn't overshoot the, the can when I started pouring with that big new big crucible. And then not long after it started flowing in there, and I had trouble seeing it because there was that much black smoke pouring out the top. I saw sand starting to, all in, the sand here was started caving in and I couldn't understand what, what was going on and why it was doing it, but that was this bit here. But what I don't get was why did it, why did it do that? You know, it still cast all of this up down here. 
Now, after a while, I kept pouring, and after a while, I saw it suddenly pop up out, out of the sand here, and then it started to spread out sideways. Let me just undo that. So, for some reason, it has busted out of the uh, plaster here. But, uh, in saying that, uh, because of an invention before, I don't have enough sand in a bucket. I'd actually piled it up like this. So the sand was only, that's how low the sand was there, so it was only just above this. So the, uh, it, was, it could be a simple case of not enough pressure on top of the foam to stop it from busting out. And you know, you've got all this weight coming down here. But it's a bit of a shame really, because outside of that, you know, if, if, if this hadn't happened here, it, it would have been a pretty decent casting. A little bit of leakage here, but that's nothing. Just machine all that off. So, but anyway, I might, uh, I might save this piece. The temptation is just to chop it all up and remelt it, but I might just save this piece here. Might be useful for something. But uh, I'll get in and it's Sunday today. I'll get in and buy some more sand tomorrow. Problem is, they store all the sand outside. It'll all be wet, so I'm going to have to spread it on a table in the sun if it's sunny. Dry it and then sieve it twice to get it down to an acceptable sort of fine enough sand get all the crap out of it and little stones and stuff but anyway so uh, this afternoon i'll make up another one of these and it can have a few days to dry i also can't cut this up at the moment because i broke my sand uh, bandsaw blade yesterday and I, that was my actual spare that i broke so I'm, i ordered two more I'll wait for them to arrive but we'll get on with this might be a couple of days before we get back to it but anyway that's life well the weather's not been at all kind to me at the moment, it was raining here this morning and it's still quite overcast so I'm not sticking with it outside. This stuff dries in the sun really fast but at the moment I've just got it spread on the table with a fan blowing on it which just takes forever. But anyway, I haven't got much other choice. Well the sun finally came out about 2 o'clock and uh, I got a batch dried in an hour where it was taking two and a half or three hours to dry it with the fan. So. Uh, that's a good thing. I've got the new uh, bit of foam drying in the sun there as well. So yippee ki -yay. Rain, rain, go away. I wanted to do some casting today. And it doesn't look good for the next week either. Alrighty, so unbelievably, after that rain this morning, was flooded half of this town. The sun came out, so I thought, alright, I only need an hour to get this done. So let's see how we went. Full of sand, so if it didn't work this time, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, winner, winner, chicken dinner, except we've got a bit of a problem there, but that's on the bottom. Although there's a bit on the top too, which could be a bit of a problem. But anyway, we'll see how we go with it, because I'm not going to try and cast it again. Alrighty, so I've knocked off the uh, the can on the top. There's not a lot in there, the bit. I don't know how much of it you can see. This little bit here, which was sort of the corner, and then I weighed all of it. Weighs a lot more than that calculator said. This, all this combined, weighed 51.57 kilos, 1,573 grams. And you take the weight of the can off that, but it probably, you know, what I used, the saw blade probably cut nearly that much off it anyway. But anyway, there's a lot of cleaning up to do on this. This is that bit I you couldn't really see it when I had it out the backyard. That bit there is not great. And this side is kind of even worse, which is the top side. But I just ordered some other uh, uh, steel epoxy stuff. I'll get here tomorrow. I'll clean it up and putty that up because it's over like one corner. So it might be okay. But there's a lot of cleaning up to do on this to, before I can start machining it proper. So I'll get in and do that while you're not looking and uh, bring you back when I'm ready to, uh, to machine it up properly. Alrighty, so I've got the worst of the crap off up this corner. There's a bit on the side here to knock off yet, but once I've done in here, I'll side mill that bit off. take any more out of that so I might uh, get into that with some of that putty when it gets here and then we'll give it a light touch up afterwards. Alrighty so I'll clean the birds off that and flip it over and do the other side but I won't uh, I won't bore you with that. I think I'll leave machine in the bottom of this until I'm done 
because I'll have to take the vice off and I won't want, want to retram it. Alrighty, so that edge cleaned up much better than the other one did. Uh, so now I'll put it in here, clean the ends up, side mill the end, and then I've been dying to uh, try these. These are an aluminium specific tip. I don't want to see how well they work in a fly cutter. That's interesting, look at that. Anyway, we'll see how we go. Place thing anyway. Alrighty, so I'll bring you back in a minute. I'll get this fly cutter set up. Alrighty, you don't really want to, but I'm going to have to do this in two passes. Anyway, that's life, isn't it? It's life on a small mill. Really is a damn shame about that because another light pass would have got rid of the odd little uh, mark we've got left in here. Little one there, one or two up here. Anyway, I'm not going to do any more to that now until that uh, filler gets here tomorrow and uh, I'll clean these up, fill them off, and then we'll take another light pass off it. Alrighty, so this bloody stuff took a day longer to get here than it should have. I ordered it plenty early enough for them to get it away the same day I ordered it. I never got it away the next day, so it's another day behind. Not having much luck lately. Things that should get here, you know, the next day and I get near till two or three days later. It's just ridiculous. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, while I was waiting for it, I got into this with uh, first the wire brush and then the little carboid burr. I'm glad I did because there was a lot of crap then in the bottoms down there that I would never have been able to get into. I had to open this one right up so that I could get in there a bit better. Scratch it all out. All the carbon from the burnt uh, foam. Now, this stuff's supposed to sit in uh, five minutes but I'm going to leave it overnight. I wish it was a lighter colour. <laughs> it's going to stand out like uh, Proverbial dog's testicles. Poke all that down in there in a minute. All these deep ones to get it all down in there. So I'll leave all that to sit and we'll have a crack at uh, cleaning it up tomorrow. At this point in the video I'd like to thank my patrons. This continued support is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to become a patron there's a link down in the description. You can sign up there and drop me a couple of dollars every month. If you don't want to be a regular contributor there's always buy me a coffee. Now let's get back to the build. Alrighty so it's had all night to uh, harden up so I'm just going to take a bit of a skim pass over the top so I don't hack into that stuff too much first time around although this sharp aluminium tip shouldn't uh, shouldn't chew it up too much I don't think but anyway we'll get going with it
Well, it really is a damn shame about uh, all that crap in here because that would have been would have come up really nice otherwise. I'll tell you what is a shame also is that uh, we've run out of time this week due in large to the fact that I had to recast that and then I had days of wet weather and then I ordered this stuff and it, and it took a day longer to get here than it bloody should have so I've just run out of time and the fact that I used up all my publishing buffer on the uh, the last tool and cutter grinder video anyway I hope you enjoyed watching me uh, to do this uh, and I hope you'll come back and watch part two when I finish this thing off thanks for watching bye bye